Hello everyone, my name is Dylan and we're back with another SATS video and this one is going to focus all on Roman numerals. Ah, I can hear the groans already. Roman numerals, why are you even learning this? What's the point? Well, it is in real life sometimes. Ever seen the face of Big Ben? And on multiple clocks we see Roman numerals, I, here. There's a bit of a hint to what's coming up later. And Super Bowl, if anyone's a fan of American football, American sport, the Super Bowl every year is labelled as the number in Roman numerals. So for example here, L-V-I-I-I, -I -I, well that's going to be 58. And we'll see why in a second. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just have a very quick recap. I equals 1, the most basic Roman numeral that exists. Just like I showed you here on the face of Big Ben, I right here equals 1, okay? You can see it up the top. I'm going to put a circle around it. There we go. I is 1. That's the most basic fact for Roman numerals. So if we know I is 1, then it's pretty obvious, isn't it, that V is 5? No, of course not. Roman numerals don't work like we'd expect numbers to work, okay? We have I for 1, and then the next time we get a new symbol is V, and that when it comes to being 5. So you might be thinking, what? We've just skipped 2, 3, and 4. Well, that's right, because we're going to look at the rules now. Okay, so how do we show, do you think, 2? If I is 1 and V is 5, what's 2? Well, okay, yeah. I, I. That's going to be 2, right? So 3, pretty obvious. Yeah, of course. I, I, I. We're going to go through all the I's until we get down to 5. So the next one, 4, is I, 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 I. Right? Wrong. There's our first rule for Roman numerals. If we have any number of symbols in a row that are the same, it cannot go past three. So this is the maximum number of I's we can have in a row. But that leaves us with a slight problem. We need to figure out what four would be. How on earth do I get there? And I can't use a new symbol other than I or V. Well, you might be thinking, oh, V take away I. Five take away one. That's going to equal four. Well, five take away one is four. But that's not how we write it down in Roman numerals. Here's what we do. I, V. Yeah, you might be thinking, what? I, V. Well, here's why. Let me explain. We've gone through the first rule. No more than three symbols the same in a row. That's why we have to reset when we get to four somehow. Well, the next thing is, if we have a Roman numeral symbol that is worth less than a different Roman numeral symbol that comes before we take it away. Let me show you what I mean. V is five. If I put an I before it, well, the I is only worth one and the V is worth five. So the I is worth less. So because it comes first, we have to think one less than five or one before five. And if we have our numbers in a row up here, what is the number that comes one before five? Yes, it's four. The reason for this is twofold. Number one, it's following the rule we just said. We can't have three symbols. Oh, we can't have more than three symbols in a row. But the second one is, how do you think we write down six? Because we don't get a new symbol yet. We don't get a new symbol yet. The next new symbol we get is at 10. So X is 10. So, so far we have I is 1, V is 5, and X is 10. So how would I write down six? Well, yeah, look, what we'll have to do here is think V is 5, and then the I, if it came before, we'd say 1 before 5, but what if it comes after? That's how we write down 6. We have now 5 and 1. So how do you think we write down 7? Yeah, V is 5, 1, 1. 5 plus 2, that gives me 7. And you'd be right if you said V, I, I, I when it comes to 8. But remember our first rule. We can't have more than three symbols the same in a row. So how on earth can we write down 10? Well, we know 10 is X. What about nine? Hmm. Well, we could do this, right? V and then that's five. Add on the four, I, V. We could do that. No, uh-uh, wrong. You might think that makes sense, but we don't do that with symbols that are 5 or 50 or 500 we're not going to have them repeated in that way do you know what we do it's really simple we go back to using the one we know x is 10 so where do you think that i goes to make nine yeah one before 10 one before 10 is nine my goodness me so just to very quickly recap 
we've gone up to 10 using three symbols, I, V, and X. And then we can use the rules around Roman numerals to work out what the rest might be. Here's something you should definitely write down. Here are the six Roman numerals that we have to know. We have to know one, 10, 100, and 1,000, so powers of 10. But Roman numerals also have these in-between symbols. Five is V, L is 50, and D is 500. So we have I, V, X, L, C, D, M. Now C, you might think century, percent, hundred. That's where that C comes from. M, you might be thinking millennium. That's a thousand. A millipede, a thousand legs. That's where a thousand helps. L and the D, we're going to have to just remember it, guys. Think of some ways that you can remember them. So this is really important. I would write this down because we're going to solve some questions now. First thing I wanted to show you were clock faces. Very, very common. In fact, in everyday life, these are probably where we see Roman numerals the most. And they only go from 1 to 12. And to be honest with you, if I'm being really truthfully honest, this is the version of Roman numerals where we could probably answer this without even knowing what the Roman numerals meant. Because we're so used to seeing a clock face that we know that the numbers go around like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12 at the top. That we're not really even reading the Roman numerals. So this is an example of a question five minutes past 11, well, we should be going here. And the reason we should know that is because this is pointing to one. Now, one we know is five minutes past because there are 60 minutes in an hour. The hour hand is pointing just past 11. So we've just gone past 11. That's five past 11. You can answer this question even though it's technically Roman numerals involved without knowing any Roman numerals at all. However, when we see questions like this, is where we have to explicitly know how to read these numbers. So let's take a look. Remembering, if we've got X's, I's, and V's, well, let's just go I was one, and then we had V, yeah, that was five, and X was 10. We need to know that. That's not gonna be given to us. We need to know and remember those facts. Here's a number written in Roman numerals. Write the number in figures. Well, let's take a look then. We need to write it in our numbers that we use. X, X. Okay, well, that's going to be 20. Then we have a new symbol, I, which is one, but it comes before a V, which is five. So we've got 20 and one and five. So it might be tempted to write 26. You would be incorrect to do that. It's not. And what we need to think about is splitting this number down here. We have 20 XX and IV. Ah, when a smaller number comes before a bigger one in Roman numerals, we take it away. So one before five is going to be four. So the answer there is 24. XX is 20. IV is four. And this idea of splitting the number up with Roman numerals is gonna be really helpful. Let's look down here then. Oh gosh, we've got Ds and Cs now. Well, I know that L was 50, because I remember these facts. C was 100, D was 500. So these are facts we need to know. Let's take a look. We've got D, well that's 500. CC, so that's 200s. So 500 and 200, IX. Wait, that's 1 and 10. That's a small one before a big one. What's 1 before 10? I can take this whole chunk here and call it 9. So I've got 500 and 200. So this whole chunk here is 700. And 1 before 10 is 9. So I have here 709. Very tricky. But if we break up the number and go one at a time and think, how do we ever see a smaller Roman numeral before a bigger one? We're taking away. That's how we solve these questions. So how about this one? Very, very common. This is a simple version now, but do you remember what M was? This is what it's really testing here. Can you remember M? Well, we talked about M being like milli, millennium, millipede, a thousand. So two M's is going to be 2000. And then I'm gonna cut it. My next one is VI. Well, V was five and I was six. The I comes after, so we're adding it on. That's gonna be six. So I've got 2000. And six, being careful to add them up at the end, just like that. This is the end of a film. The year was 2006. Cool. So here is what we're going to see in terms of questioning, where we just have to know Roman numerals like. We might see in the table where we have to answer a couple. LX, that's 60. So again, it's giving you a little hint to start with. You might know X is 10. So you might, even if you forget what L is, you might think, oh, well, L must be 50, right? Because it's told me that this is 60. You are right. Let's see what we've got here. LXX, that's 50 and 10 and 10. 
So 50, 60, 70. So it's going to be 70. And I'm going to split it off. VI. Well, I is after the V. So I'm going to add it on. So 70 add 6. Yes, this is 76. Brilliant. Now let's take a look at the next one. X is 10. Oh, so I'm going to write down 10. But notice, the next Roman numeral is C, which is 100. Do you remember our rule? If a smaller Roman numeral is before a bigger one, we're going to take it away. So I'm going to rub out what I've done. Because what I'm saying here is 10 before 100. What is 10 less than 100? Yes, that's right. It's going to be 90. So XC is 90. Because if I wrote 90 with L for 50 and X60, X70, X80 and X again for 90, that would break my other rule. I can't have three symbols, more than three symbols in a row. So that's why we have to go to XC. So 10 before 100 is 90. Three I's is three, not 903, be very careful, 93. Again, how many ways can they show this? Well, we've seen just straight up asking us to work it out. We've seen it in the end of a film title. We've seen it in a table. We might also get a joining up chart just like this. So in this case, we're given the answers. We need to match them up. The first one's been done for us, 106. So again, if you're unsure, you might think, well, I know VI is six, so C must be 100. So they are giving us hints here, but we're going to have to know other facts because look right here, we have D. Well, remember earlier, we said D was 500. We need to know this. So we've got 500 and then XC. We just spoke about this, 10 and 100. Well, 10 is smaller than 100. So 10 less than 100 is 90. So here we have D 500. And then we have 90 after, so we're going to match this to 590. Now we only need to solve one more because whatever's left will just go to the remaining number. So looking at these two, if you're thinking which one's easier, I'd go for this one down here. M is 1,000. Okay. C is 100. And X is 10. They go in descending order, so we just add them up. 1,000 plus 100 plus 10 is 1,110. So even without doing and solving the last one, we can say it's 571. If we wanted to make sure, we could double check. D is 500. L is 50. XX is 20. So that's 570. And then the final I gives us the one. This is how Roman numerals are showed in the SATS papers. Sometimes just in a clock face where we don't even really need to know how to solve them. But most of the time, if we ever see them crop up, it is like this. You need to remember 1, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500, and 1,000. In Roman numerals, you have to know these facts here. If you know these and you know the rules we spoke about, you can unlock all the answers to all the questions. So that means one thing. It's the end of the video. It's your turn. Can you let me know in the comments? What is MMCDXIV in numerals? Apply the rules we've looked at. See if you can get the right answer. Let me know below, and I'll see you next time.